Hello and welcome to another Nihongo Gamer video. The reason I'm holding my Wacom Mobile Studio Pro drawing tablet is because today's video is a little bit different. Victrix recently sent me this arcade stick, the Victrix Pro FS Fight Stick Arcade Stick, which has a removable cable, it's got a removable stick, it's got, it doesn't actually come with these colorful buttons, I put these buttons on in a separate video, and I loved a whole lot about it, but there was one thing that I wasn't too keen on, and it was the loudness of the buttons. The stick has actually come out and is for sale, and a lot of people have been testing the buttons, and actually they really like the way the buttons feel and sound, so... I'm very happy for those people, and I was in talks with Victrix about that. Who would have thought that they would send one of these? Now this is an interesting project because it's not just got a different set of buttons in here. I was also offered the opportunity to have artwork laser engraved on the front of this stick and I have not actually seen it yet. So inside this box, and this is actually not the retail box that you get, this is just a box that they had lying around. They've put in here a Victrix Pro arcade stick with artwork that I drew on my Wacom Mobile Studio Pro, which I will show you the footage for later. I'm unbelievably excited because as you know, on this channel, one of my favorite things to do is to draw my own artwork for Fight Stick with the Mad Cats TE2 or the Razer Pantera or the Pantera Evo or the Quanba Obsidian or all these sticks that have plexiglass on the front. You can open up the plexiglass or rather take the plexiglass off, draw your own illustration and put it onto the stick and personalize it so that when you show up at locals and when you show up at tournaments, you've got that extra personalization factor. So I'm a big fan of sticks that can do that. I did not know that when they released the Victrix Pro, they would also be going to tournaments with a laser engraving machine. And as long as you buy one of these sticks, they'll do it for free. They'll take your high quality artwork design and the laser burn it into the aluminium of this stick. I'm really excited. Let's go ahead and unbox it. Now the first thing I need to do is get this box down here. I'm unbelievably excited. I'm unbelievably excited because I know that a lot of other people have been taking their own artwork, getting other people to draw artwork for them or having their logo that they've always used for Twitter or YouTube or their team logo. In honor of the game that got me back into I was gonna say back into Street Fighter. That got me back into fighting games in the past couple of years. I wanted to celebrate with some Street Fighter V themed artwork. Let's go ahead and open up this box. It's got that satisfying shimp. Inside this box is going to be, oh my God, I'm so I'm freaking out. Oh, I thought it was gonna, I thought it was gonna be underneath this plastic. It wasn't because there's plastic there. Hold on, let's just get all this stuff out of the way because this is not, this is not important. This is not the important stuff. I'm freaking out, here we go. Let's get out the Victrix Pro customized, laser engraved, illustrated arcade stick. Oh god, I don't, I'm not ready for this. Is it gonna look anything like I expected? Here we go. One, two, three. Here we go. Whoa! <laughs> oh my god. Have a look at that, that is unfreaking believable. All right, so as I expected, a little bit like when I opened up the first Victrix Pro, I thought probably seeing it in person was gonna be a little bit different to seeing it in the pictures. My probably main takeaway from the Victrix Pro fight stick, the original unboxing that I did, was that when you first take it out and hold it, you go, this is, this is something else entirely. You see the pictures and you go, okay, it looks like a compact, smooth, rounded stick with handles. Okay, that looks kind of convenient. But then when you put your hands on it for the first time, and I think also because the fact that it's cold aluminium, it gives you a real fresh feeling. This time, even more exciting is the fact that you've got this shine. Oh my God, that shimmer of the laser engraving. Oh, that is insane. The white, not only is it laser burnt in as a design, hopefully you can actually see, or maybe can I, can I zoom in? 
Here, let me zoom in on here. There's actually texture to the white. So the it when they burn in the laser engraving, you actually get the texture, the underlying brushed texture of the aluminium below it. Oh my god. The reason that it is designed the way it is is so that when I have my hand on the stick and when I have my hand on the buttons, I'm not covering too much. <laughs> Hopefully you can already see it right here. There's a design here, then this, this is where my hand will be. There's a design here, this is where my other hand will be, and then there'll be a design here. And then I've got my channel logo here on the side, right next to the Victrix logo itself. Another main design thing that I'll just explain right now before I show you the footage is I didn't want to have too much detail in the faces. From far away, it just starts to look like noodles and spaghetti. I was like, how do I go about a design that when looked from afar, you can still see? And I didn't want to only do silhouettes. So this way, what I've done by only coloring in the clothing and having the line artwork for the skin areas and not having any details for the ears or the eyes or anything. Hopefully, even from far away, this is a recognizable image that you can see. Oh, this is blowing my mind wide open. <laughs> Before we go any further, it's probably important that I actually show you what the stick looks like with the arcade stick plugged in. Take the plug out, plug this in, and does it look, how does it look? <laughs> I just don't have any words. This is literally the happiest day of the week. <laughs> now this is literally the happiest day ever. Because I'm not in America, I'm unable to actually go to the tournaments and get the laser engraving done for me. I was not actually asked to make a video about this. This is literally, they just sent this to me because we were talking about the new silent buttons and also the laser engraving. I'm just showing you this because I want you to see it. And also the drawing process, which I'm gonna show you right now. So enjoy some footage from the actual making and drawing of this design. All right, so I've been looking forward to show you this footage for a couple weeks now. Essentially, I only had a few days to get the artwork to Victrix so they could do the laser engraving when the equipment was set up at events like Final Round and NCR. I originally sketched out the design at a cafe on my iPad Pro and Apple Pencil using an app called Clip Studio Paint. After that was done, I moved over to the Mobile Studio Pro. I took a photo of the Victrix Pro FS using my iPhone and imported it in as a layer. I traced the positions of the buttons, the stick, the Victrix logo, and then the main outline of the stick itself. The lower portion of the stick is at an angle. At first I thought this would affect the design, but after seeing photos from the launch party in March, I noticed that the slant doesn't really warp the artwork that much. After I had the button positions marked out, I went in with a rough sketch while constantly looking at screenshots from the game itself. The thing about Street Fighter V and any of the recent 3D model based games is that tracing the 3D models results in a pretty lifeless looking 2D illustration. So this whole rough sketch was done freehand, but the poses themselves are directly from the move animations in the game. Now, as I mentioned before, I chose this combo because it's in three parts, and so it sits in between my hands quite nicely. The third part of the combo is a rising dragon punch type move, which was ideal because the left side of the stick is wide open and generally where the main artwork would go anyway. But also it's just such an annoying combo because that low kunai is just annoying to deal with, which I think is brilliant. I wanted to be sure I got all the heights and lengths right, so I was free frequently dragging it over other parts of the image to make sure that everything was all in proportion. I'd originally planned to do all three parts quite roughly, but I got carried away with detail on part three, so now I'm going back to parts one and two to do the more polished sketch. All my illustrations end up following this pattern, a rough sketch followed by a cleaner rough sketch, and then finally the finished line work and the colouring. As you can see, pose number one got more or less completely erased in order to get the anatomy and everything else correct. With all the poses complete, I then moved them around so they'd sit perfectly in between where I imagined my palms would rest. I realized later that I could have just taken a picture with my hands in the photo, so I'll try and remember that for next time. Since I drew it in black and the finished engraving was going to be in white, I inverted the layer color. And what you see here is the initial image I submitted to Victrix just to see if such a large artwork was actually going to even be possible on their laser machine. Now the next step is like a third rough sketch. Originally I'd been asked for a vector-based version of the artwork, but later on I was told that a very high-resolution ping file would be okay too. 
I'd done the second rough sketch a little too rough, thinking I could fix it while vectorizing it in Illustrator later, but in the end I figured I could do better line art if I just used the G-Pen tool in Clip Studio. You'll also see here that I experimented with block shading for the skin and outlines for the clothing, but it looked like that game Just Dance, and I really wasn't into the look of it, so I changed it back. In the first sketch I'd done the poses without Ibuki's um, fringe hair, I don't really know what to call it, but it was a lot of fun to draw because I was trying to imagine how it would move since the first pose is standing still, the second is mid-dash, and the last one is rising upward. Then, since it had to be black and white, I figured I might as well be as manga as possible, and I added some speed lines, and anyway, in the game she's got a lot of motion blur and after image effects, and I kind of wanted to capture the energy of that somehow. After that, I mostly just spent a lot of time cleaning up and fixing things that looked off balance, like the position of the hands, the precise curve of her twin ponytail thing, whatever that is. And from then on, it's just the final line work. Now, since I was drawing this in Clip Studio Paint, every line drawn is actually saved as a vector, which meant that I could scale the exported image up to something like 1200 dpi, or whatever I felt like was necessary. And that actually turned out to be plenty enough of detail for the laser machine. Honestly, I think this was the most fun I've had doing an arcade stick art. Since the Victrix ProFS has to be engraved, you only really get one chance to get this right, and originally I saw that to be a bit of a downside. But after spending extra time really considering exactly what image I want on my stick for potentially years from now, I think actually I was able to put something together that I maybe wouldn't have done for any other arcade stick. Made it feel kind of special. After that, the only thing left was to send the final artwork to Victrix and just hope for the best. And literally what you just saw was the first time I had ever seen it after the laser work had been done. You might be okay.
water and go out. But Lolo's been reviewing this stuff for 20 years. Alright, since this video is going to be way too long if I also do the button testing because I'm going to have to t install the new buttons and test a whole different range of combinations to see which of the buttons is the quietest. Instead, I'm going to just give you a quick demo of how the stick feels. Obviously, it's not going to have changed at all in feel by putting a design on it. And these are the original buttons. And as you can see, they're back to their original loudness, loudness and glory. I just want to show you briefly what it looks like to play with the stick with this design and show you briefly what it looks like to actually have my hands on it so you can see if you're interested in making your own stick design what it looks like your hands basically will sit right here and right here so if you want to have anything important that people need to be able to see i think that putting it here here and here is probably going to be where it looks the best and actually this has actually worked out exactly how i had expected it previously when i did the mad cats design i actually wasn't really thinking about it too hard and actually my wrist if you look down here when I'm playing with the Mad Cats, my hand does kind of rest right on top of Miku's face. So I wasn't really thinking about that too hard. And that's probably where I learned my lesson. I was tempted to put the Nihongo Gamer logo up here, but then it started to look like she was kicking a soccer ball up into the air, or where she was like playing basketball with her DP, DP basketball. So I, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna put the logo over here. I guess the one thing that I absolutely have to do now is that since I've got since I've gone to all this trouble to make this design, it would be a real shame if I didn't actually show you this move. So if I can get this right, I just hold down the medium punch button and then I let go, dash, then the DP. Oh man, so hilarious. I really, I really feel like since I've got this design on the stick now, I'm gonna finish every round with this move. <laughs> oh, this is, this is probably the best idea I've ever had. <laughs> all right, how does that look? <laughs> well, okay, so it doesn't quite work because the screen moved, but if I have him in the corner, the screen won't, won't move. Okay, she's standing in exactly the right place. Hopefully if I let go of the kunai and do the dash... <laughs> I basically made this design just so I could make this part of the video. <laughs> All right, that's all for now. I hope you've enjoyed this unboxing video of the laser engraved with my personally drawn the, well, I mean, actually you've seen how I designed it. This is taken directly from a move from Street Fighter V. I figured even if Street Fighter VI comes out later this year or Street Fighter VI comes out next year, I want to always remember that Street Fighter V was the fighting game that really got me back into fighting games. Well, including Blaze Blue. Honestly, it could have been Blaze Blue Cross Type Battle as well. But Street Fighter V was the one that I was like, you know, hey, I actually want to buy a bigger arcade stick and get into this whole arcade stick thing. In honor of Street Fighter V, a game which has a lot of controversy around it, but I still love it. This is the Street Fighter V Ibuki doing the kunai release into the dash, into the DP. It's a move that you absolutely will see. So get used to it. Thank you very much for watching this Nihongo Gamer video. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, share the links and all that great stuff. Of course, join the Discord where you can continue and we can chat in there. And a big thank you to Victrix for sending me this stick because I was not able to go to America and go to final round or go to NCR or go to any of these events where they're they've got themselves stationed with a laser machine So that's all for now, and I'll see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video